What's up, good gang? It's your girl KP, yes, Camilla Porsche. And welcome back to Shade Topic Tuesdays, where we count down the hottest shade that's been going on every week with your girl KP. Okay, so I know, I know, I missed last week. I tried to do a faceless because I was sick, and then I was like, I'm not feeling it. That's not what I'm about. Even right now, I'm. I, I sound a little stuffy and I am still a little bit under the weather, but I'm like, you know what? I can't go two Tuesdays when I'm doing Shade Topic Tuesdays, so I'm here. I'm holding it down for y'all and I'm here so we get the shade out. Now, before we get into this shade, I am still doing the prom dress giveaways. So make sure, like I said, you guys hit me up and inbox me on Instagram at msz underscore kp. DM me, say I want the dress. In the Addy, and I'll ship it right off. So since I skipped last week, I'm posting up the two dresses that I have. This one, and this one. So these are your options. Remember, sizes L through XL, very stretchy material. You can give it to a friend, a sister, a cousin, the girl in the back of the class, whoever you want, right? Your neighbor, your auntie, going to an adult prom, whatever you wanna do. Just inbox me saying I want the dress and I will send it to you. Okay, so now, let's get into this shade. Okay, so since I missed last week, I am gonna do... So since I missed last week, I am gonna do a quick recap very, very, very fast. Besides, it ain't too much going on. People trying to be on their best behavior. Oops. Ain't too much going on. People trying to be on their best behavior. So let me do this quick recap very, 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 very fast so we could rush through last week so we could get into the shit that happened this week. Okay, so first I want to recap is Kelly Rowland. Y'all know the situation that happened with the dressing room and Bethany Frankel coming out talking about, oh, Kelly Rowland was being a diva because her dressing room was too small and all of our dressing rooms are small and she just got to deal with it and come and do her job. It was very unprofessional when she was being a diva. She walked off the set of the Today Show when she was supposed to host. Mind you, it's not that all their dressing rooms are small. They do have a big dressing room. At the time, it was just being occupied by Jennifer Lopez. But if she signed on to do something and she stated something in her contract and y'all didn't do, y'all didn't offer the requirements that was in her contract then yeah she walked off besides as we saw all the interviews that she went on she was being asked questions about Beyonce Beyonce's renaissance tour Beyonce's country music drop and she's like um respectfully I just dropped the movie Mia Copa on Netflix this is what I'm here to talk about if y'all want to talk about if y'all want to know what's going on with B ask B and we know B don't come out so Diva, nah, she did what the fuck she did and moved the fuck on, as I'm gonna do. Next on the recap, speaking of Beyonce, we got Beyonce making history as the first black female artist to reach number one on a Billboard Hot 100 with the country song. Shouts out to her. Also, since she's been going country, she's been adding streams to the other black country artists that maybe not everyone knew about, so their streams also went up. Win-win, and that's how the fuck you do that. Dolly Parton also gives Beyonce her flowers, saying, I'm a big fan of Beyonce, and I'm very excited that she's done a country album. So congratulations on her Billboard Hot Country number one single. Can't wait to hear the full album. Love, Dolly. Ow. Get it black girl, get it black girl, get it black girl, get it black girl. Moving along. Next we have on a recap is Offset posting up Yo Bay. First of all, when he posted this up, he was on Yo Bay like, you need to drop the album and stop being scary. And we like, oh, you know, he just trying to support his woman. You know, he trying to get out the dog house. He trying to make sure they stay good. Now, fast forward to this week, Cardi B drops her freestyle. Like, like what? And we see that the video was directed by Offset. So when you was promoting her, you was really promoting yourself because you wanted us to see your work. See what you did there. Joe Budden enters the chat speaking on the album drop dates of Nicki Minaj and Cardi B, stating that they was trying to be like, you know, a drop on the same day so it could be a battle, which would have been good streams for both artists because you know when it's a competition going on, that just makes more people pay attention to that date specifically. They not like, I could wait on tomorrow, I could wait till next week, or I'm gonna end up listening to it one day. They like, oh, if it's a race to the top and everybody's fans rush, and then that's a collaborative fan thing because they'll listen to your song, but yeah, album and then go and compare it to your ops so that would have been good if the girls would have came together and made that plan together that would have been a good business deal for both artists but they ain't do that so now that Nicki Minaj is on tour and killing it and having sold out shows is when Cardi B decided I'm gonna drop this freestyle now mind you when Nicki Minaj was talking about her album dropping and putting her music out Cardi B was like hmm I've been taking a break for too long I think I want to drop a song and the fans was like you don't let Nicki Minaj have 
nothing. But before the beef, you have to remember that she was motivated by Nicki. And then this beef came about. That doesn't mean that she doesn't still idolize her. It doesn't mean that she don't still want that smoke, neither, so. Next on the recap, we have Quincy Brown. Because he decided to show us that he got a face tattoo. That said perfect. But it wasn't perfect. It was in a bad place. It was nothing perfect about that. So like I said before, we the fans be moving shit. The fans didn't like it. The fans did not like that shit. So what he did, he was like, yeah. So I'm going to start the um, laser removal for this face tat and get this off. Now, was that to try to shed the light away from the Diddy accusations that keep popping up? Were you trying to create a diversion? Let us go to a detour so we could not look over here. Now you see me, now you don't. That wasn't gonna work. Not that dumbass shit, that wasn't gonna work. So last we saw from that is him, him getting a tattoo removal and I guess we just gonna have to see the results when we see the results. Next on the recap is Simon and Portia. Now, we could go from the recap to the present because like I said on the previous Shade Topic Tuesdays that even though Portia posted Happy Wife, Happy Life, there was a song playing in the background and like I said in my last video, I'm like, it's kind of sus. It's, it's like a sarcastic message. Basically saying, yeah, happy wife, happy life, but guess what, I'm not the fuck happy. There was already trouble in paradise. And any woman that's willing to leave their man right after they go through some shit like that. And this is why everybody is jumping to speculation, saying, oh nah, she just, you know, taking care of her assets and making sure her money is untouched. No, she's wrecked to go. She been wrecked to go. Now she has a reason to go. Cause you can't assume that she knew absolutely nothing about this. Like it. It, 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 it was a shock. That wasn't a shock to you. You got caught up in your little lifestyle. You're over it. She has a track record of being caught up in her little moments in her lifestyle and she gets over it. And then she's out. And everybody's like, oh yeah, they doing this together. You know, since the government has this eye on Simon. If that's the case, she wouldn't be asking him not to hide or destroy evidence or, you know, his financials and all of that. No, she want a piece of the pie before she split. She back on TV. She got her little storyline. She snatched shorty man, wooed him, made him fall for her. She got him to marry her. Little do you know, she got him to marry her. He thought he was playing her, she was playing him. That's the way karma works, baby. And now she about to dip on him, take some of his money so he could he could post all he won being unbothered and he on a golf course and he wondering if he about to buy a new whip while his woman is filing for divorce and leaving him. If they wanted y'all to believe that it was a scam, the divorce was a scam, then he would have pretended to be hurt, but he wasn't. He was fronting on her, which means he was in his bag, which means that her filing for a divorce was serious. And him at a public attempt to show his wife that he do get give a fuck was, oh, when the divorce is final, I'll stop loving my wife. That was a threat. That was a threat. Like, bitch, if you really, if once we sign these papers, I'm done with you. Translation. Y'all missing all the translations. <laughs> y'all missing all the translations. The hidden messages. Y'all have to pay attention. He's letting y'all know, yeah, bitch, once I sign these papers, I'm done with you. There was nothing cute about that message at all. And she's not playing with him. Next on the recap is Ray J and Princess. Very quick, because once again, they're calling it quits. Once again, they're calling it quits. Once again, they're calling it quits. The internet is like, girl, again. You want us to believe you this time? Is you for real this time? Is this the time where it's the last time is the last time and this is the last time? Cause last time you said that it wasn't the last time. So is this last time the last time or is it gonna be another time? Which is nobody business, but clearly, like, y'all got a lot of growing up to do. No need to announce the filing of a divorce. Once you're divorced, check back the fuck in. We don't care about your process. Because I guarantee you, if that man is out doing something that you don't like, your feelings is going to be hurt. You can't protect yourself with a post saying, well, I filed for divorce, so whatever he do is I, I. No, bitch. You still going to be mad as if that's your nigga. You want to know why? Because that is still your nigga. Until those papers are signed. Papers, signs, papers. Babies. <laughs> Next on a recap to get serious real quick. Five things, right? Real quick. We have the pastor speaking on rape, talking about, oh, if you dress a certain type of way and you get raped and I'm a person on a jury, I'm letting that man walk. The fuck you talking about? You're not dead ass, right? Because we can say the same thing for you. Women ain't the only ones out here getting raped. Men like to do men in booty holes. Did you forget? And this is a pastor. And I'm still speaking on it. A pastor said this shit. A pastor. 
Like, do you have daughters? Or are you trying to scare them into wearing certain type of clothes? Because when you outside in your little hot shorts, matter of fact, it don't even matter what you wear. If you just walk down the street and someone just feel like violating you, they gonna violate you. Is that the difference? We're gonna be like, well, what did you have on? Because then that depends on the intent of the crime. What in the dumbassness was, the fuck was that? Like, next. IVF treatments have been put on pause because now, if you destroy eggs in a lab, there's a way for you to be responsible for that life, that possible life. So now, when doctors, you know, go and collect the eggs out of our body and they go and store it and cool it, if anything happened to those eggs, if you tell me I had eight eggs and when I come back, you like, well, now you only have three, the others died, now we can sue y'all. So they like, y'all can sue us because if your shit die, your shit die. But now it's, it's a possibility that it, it could be our fault. So yeah, we we're gonna put a pause on this so we can see how we can help the millions and millions of families that we help produce kids with this IVF treatment because now y'all trying to sue us if, so if something goes wrong in the freezer. But then y'all just get rid of abortion. When people was against abortion because they say you was murdering a fetus and then y'all passed a law allowing people to get abortions, women, allowing women to get abortions, but y'all gonna add penalties for IVF treatments when the eggs don't survive? Who comes up with this shit? Like, I, can I get hired? It seems like y'all niggas is just hiring anybody. I could use a different job. Can I get, can I, can I? Baby. Number three. So I'm not sure if y'all familiar with the viral story that went around about the little boy, the little black boy with the dreads who got suspended for having dreads. So his family filed a lawsuit. So they just did the case and guess what? They didn't win the goddamn case. So y'all basically said, Oh, it was okay for him to get suspended because of his hairstyle? Because of his hairstyle. Dreads ain't nothing but a, a, a special type of braid or a twist. It's a dread, it's locked. It's really just hair sitting out like this in clumps. But neat clumps. It's not, it's not making sense to y'all either, right? Because it, is it just me or? Number four, Donald Trump. Donald, Donald, fucking Donald. Like, I, I, I be with him sometimes. I be making excuses for his foul ass mouth. I guess it's one of those, oh, it was okay when it wasn't about you, right? When he was all like, oh, it came from China. Y'all thought that shit was funny, but now that when he's talking about black people, now y'all wanna get y'all butt hurt? Yeah, bitch, because it's about us now. That's how that works. That's usually how that works. When people talk about Scorpios, Aries don't give a fuck. It's usually how that works. So he all making a mockery of us, talking about, oh, I made sh shoes, you know, black people love sneakers, and you know, I'm winning a vote with that on my, my mug shot. You know, black people, they like to print that on t-shirts. And, and the crowd is all, and nobody seen nothing wrong with this shit. Finally, number five. Mind you, and this shit happened while it was still February. Black History Month. There was a display of a reenactment of segregation on the classroom door. Y'all see this shit? Like. And it was up long enough for it to cause an outrage and for someone to take a picture for it to circulate and become viral. Who the fuck thought this was a good idea? Y'all not serious. They keep playing in our face. That's what I'm saying. This is why young black America be feeling hopeless and then they go out and do what the fuck they do. We go out and do what the fuck we do and act the way we fucking act because no matter what, no matter how many fucking marches, complaints, outrage, viral videos share this story, no matter how many cases they let us win, this shit is still gonna be a weapon to these people, a disgrace to certain people. But we're gonna get off the serious topic and recap Usher. Just a little statement he made about having Grammys and never walk along the Grammy stage to accept the Grammy. How the fuck is that even possible? And niggas in your camp allow this to happen? Ain't nobody said nothing, did nothing, no nothing? Never? Not miss the Super Bowl. And it's too late for you to win one now because, matter of fact, you just dropped the song. Let's see, let's see. I mean, I don't know. Your statement didn't get enough public outrage for anyone to really make a difference. Like how we did with Angela Bassett and then the next year she won the award that we complained about her not winning. So we'll see what we could do for you. It wasn't enough public outrage. I ain't see it, but we'll see. Recap to Jess Hilarious and the whole transphobic rumor and her having to come and defend herself against a podcaster whom she met in person, who didn't say none of the shit to her face, but on her podcast, when she had a trans guest, decided to throw dirt on Jess Hilarious' name, saying, yeah, well, I think she's transphobic, but didn't have that energy in her face. So Jess Hilarious came out and was like, bitch, where was this at when you was in my face? 
Right, it wasn't there. That's where it was at. It was in your motherfucking back pocket. And then you conveniently pulled that shit out of your back pocket for your show, right? Corny ass bitches, right? Now let's get this straight. The reason why that rumor may have started and got misconstrued is because people used to try to insult her by calling her a man. Just hilarious. And she's a natural woman. So it's insulting because she's a natural woman, not because she has something against trans women, but because she's a natural woman. You saw a Dominican get upset about being called a Puerto Rican or a Mexican. It makes them upset. Not particularly because they hate this other race, but because you're incorrect. Bitch, get it right. That's it. Like I said with the zodiac signs, let somebody say, oh bitch, you act like a, I like Scorpios. What can they say? Oh bitch, you act like a Pisces. Oh what? And watch people get sensitive. And then it's gonna be like, oh yeah, this person hate Pisces. No, motherfucker, I don't hate Pisces, but get my zodiac correct. You're mislabeling me. That's all that was. Recap Baddies Reunion, part three. Trinidash, Trinidash. There was a petition to get Roly out. First episode of Baddies Caribbean auditions came out. She was not there. She did post a video before the, the episode aired saying that oh, she doing her surgeries and healing and you know, she not showing up. You had no choice. Nobody wanted you there. Nobody wanted you there anyway. And then Roly acting like she didn't know E.T. was going to run up on Natalie and then turning around saying that when she told me I told her not to do it. So then you did know. You telling a grown ass adult not to do something don't mean they not going to do it. You should have gave your friend Natalie a heads up, but you didn't. Everybody hanging up on E.T. She held her own. So bitches run up, get done up, and they did. Fucks with her hard for that. Bitch got mad hard and she stood on everything and ain't nobody knocked her down. So what happened? Everybody all Tzatziki, Tzatziki, Tzatziki. That was a fair fight. Tzatziki what? She ain't knocked her down. I don't intend to really speak on these topics ever again, to be honest. I'm just closing it out because I've been talking about it for the past, what is it? What, like three Shade Topic Tuesdays? So I'm just closing it out. I don't intend on talking about them like that. Not for shows anyway, but if the drama is online, I'm gonna talk about that. Like how we just spoke about Natalie being exposed. Like how we spoke about the cast sleeping with Lemmy. And then Janisha hosting a reunion trying to act like, trying to be the bigger woman and not be embarrassed in public. But like your nigga is fucking these bitches and you gotta sit there and ask them questions. Barely, cause they don't even let you speak. If my man, if I, if I was the host on a network that my man owned, all y'all bitches would have to respect me. The respect level is too here for me, like you, Act like you know that I'm in a building. But I get it, y'all get money. Y'all extorting these women to look like fools and making money off of them, so she just kicked back, relax, and let them act like fools because that's what's making me money. I feel you, girl. So now Natalie Nunn is being exposed for all the niggas that she's cheating on her husband with. She came out about the last dude talking about, oh, you just trying to extort me. I was just trying to do music with you. It wasn't even like that. Like, she wasn't fucking with him. I guess that timeline didn't add up because she was with her husband when she was allegedly with Fabio Foreign's friend. But now she's in another cheating scandal, but there's actual footage. So then she came out and explained herself like, oh, that was during the time that me and my husband was on a break. Right. Um, in case you didn't notice, taking a break from your husband does not mean that you could fuck other people. Was that an entanglement? Jada done fucked it up for everybody. Was it an entanglement? Let them know. T took that shit, girl. But she was like, whatever, I, I fucked with him while me and my man was on a break. And then she turned around and tried to slander him. You're in your bag. You're in your feelings. And then let me, like I said on a previous Shade Topic Tuesdays, little do y'all know, Natalie must be fucking him too because it's giving too much emotions, which is why she had a fight with her friend because why is you fucking my friend now? And then you fucking all the cast members, which she probably was like, I got a man, I don't really care. So you could fuck all these other bitches, but you gonna fuck my friend? Which he probably fucked Scotty on purpose just to make Natalie mad. Because why you stepping out and fucking niggas on a, on a different show on my network? Like, it's given, it's given side nigga, like, it's given secret relationship with Natalie and Lemmy. And if y'all put all these pieces together, you know what I mean? Y'all doing shit on purpose. Which is why, why, cause why, if you think about it, why would Natalie, Natalie being so close to Scotty, why would Natalie agree to bring Scotty's op on the show? Your own friend. Cause you trying to build that wedge between her and Lemmy and all of y'all are fucking him. Like, and you can hear him say it in the video. Cause you you know one thing Stunner Girl's gonna do is expose these motherfuckers. So when she gets to expose it, she comes with receipts. Now listen to this video. You could clearly hear him in the end saying that he already fucked her. First of all, he sound like he's mad that she was bringing the nigga around. Talking about he's showing up too much. Why don't you tell your husband? What, what does that have to do with you? Why does it concern you who she's fucking and who she's with? Why are you trying to force her to tell on herself to her husband? Why are you that pressed? 
Mm -hmm. So you hear in this clip, and I guess she was she was feeling herself a little too much. And you know, he was all uh, telling her sweet nothing. It's like, yeah, this your shit, you know. Baddies is your shit, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And now that he's in his bag, he don't want her to say it no more. But when she said it on Bad vs. Wild, which this is pre-recorded, it aired a while ago. Ain't nobody have nothing to say. When she said baddies is her shit, now all of a sudden, you got a fucking problem. So I'm gonna let y'all listen to what he said. You don't own no fucking baddies. I own that shit. You're a fucking liar. You lie all the fucking time. You lie to your own fucking husband and your family. Don't, like, what are you doing? If you want to risk it all by doing irresponsible things with Curtis in public, go ahead. I'm falling all the way back. I told you before, I don't like him coming to our shit. I don't like him coming to the Bad Boys premiere. I don't like him coming to the Baddies premiere. And he already at the Baddies West premiere, just taking pictures on the car. I don't want this nigga around my shit. You think you're just going to keep getting away with the with the dumb shit you're doing? Then have a real-ass conversation with your husband. Hey, yo, I'm fucking Curtis. We we together, and that's what it is. I don't give a fuck if I already fucked. He already fucked. And she knew what she was doing, ending a video right there. To try to make it seem like, oh, but she she ain't air too No, you air just enough. You made sure you cut the video letting us know. He said he already fucked her. Like, press for what? You fucking this nigga behind your husband's back. Like, bitch, I already fucked you. Like, it's getting real messy over there. All that's gonna do is make us continue to view. You know what I'm saying? It's so good for the show. But Janisha ain't coming out and saying shit. Like, honestly, I thought Lemmy was gay. Not gonna lie. I thought Janisha was his beard. First of all, I didn't even know they was together. I thought they was just business partners and all of a sudden they started calling her his wife. I don't know if that was an image thing. I thought he was gay and then now all of a sudden he's fucking all these bitches and I'm just confused. I don't know. It's, it's, it's all confusing to me. But now, let's get to the big story. Diddy, 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 diddy. Take that. It's way, it's, now, it's so many accusations popping out, all these new accusations just popping out, popping out, popping out, popping out, popping out. And now, what's, what's currently going very rolling crazy is that somebody figured out that there was a story in, there was a story in a lawsuit about Meek Mill. Not my favorite rapper. I mean, what he do, listen, if niggas is freaky deaky, whatever, the men is gonna tear you down, I honestly don't care what you do with your booty hole or if you sticking your peen in a girl booty hole or a boy booty hole booty holes a booty hole if you do booty holes you do booty holes right i guess whatever that's your business but not my favorite rapper y'all not about to i don't like it he almost didn't survive his beef with pretty drink pretty light skin sensitive drink okay so you we already knew like he wasn't that he he not he not like that he does talk a lot of talk but when it always came down to him being about that it, it clearly he not really like that i don't like that he ain't like that but you know i don't know you in, in real life i fuck with your music and that's it but so apparently in the lawsuit it's like you know he was doing the freaky thinking at the freak off at the diddy parties and academics went on his podcast like hold on not Meek, not Meek. Uh, 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 oh, so you doing the bending? <laughs> so Meek got wind of this and like went off. Went on his little Twitter rant. The rants wasn't hitting and it wasn't convincing. It seemed like he was trying really hard to convince us that he wasn't gay, which was just making him look like you you got a little flavor in your ear. Like you got a little sugar in your tank. Talking about, oh, it's nothing like wet. <laughs> And then people pulling out the old tweets, which you were talking about, you like the D in that video where Diddy calling you daddy. Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. And then that picture, y'all wearing the matching shirts at the party. It just looking crazy. The one plus one is equal in two a little too much. So... Meek Mill all going off and then tries to change the subject to make us, like I said, when we focus on one thing, they try to make us look the other way. So then he starts talking about other stuff, like his lawyer told him not to do this, and he was told not to respond to this or give his energy to this, that, and the third. And then he starts focusing his attention in other places, and then he ends up in this car accident. Now, if it was real, first of all, he, he said he was okay, but you know, he posts the picture, which is why, whatever. So he posts the picture of the car accident and letting us know he's all good and he's okay and then he moves on to supporting Kodak Black and saying how black artists need the support and you know all this shit that he's talking about because he's trying to get us to forget that gay shit that's going on with his name attached to it. It's the smoking guns like I don't care personally but like 
You know how you look at someone a certain way and not knowing them personally, but going off of based on what they present to you, and then you feel like that's the true them, and then finding out that that's not them, it's very disappointing. That's a, we don't, we be wanting to know our favorite celebrities' personal lives, and it's like, damn, that kind of fucked it up. Like, you know niggas be in their cars, or their houses, their cribs, wanting to listen to bump, bang, grind. And it's like, I don't even know how to feel listening to this shit no more. Because niggas' personal lives ruin shit. Like, seems like you're ready. You can't listen to that song the same way anymore because she wasn't ready. She wasn't ready. And then him yelling at the end of the song is terrifying. So are you ready? Woo! For my loving baby. I got to know right. Like, you, she wasn't ready. Like, relax. Talk about, I got to know right now. Right now. First of all, you don't need to know shit right now. Like, nigga, no means no and that's it. Do you want it, babe? No. Do you need it, babe? No. She wasn't ready. <laughs> Fuck. None of them was ready. Most of them wasn't ready, though. Them old bitches, I don't know, but they wasn't ready. Am I the one that you preparing for? Like, nigga, nigga, no. And say it, don't spray it. Cause I don't wanna make no mistakes at all. Made the biggest mistake of his <laughs> life because it seems like you're ready she wasn't ready she wasn't ready y'all she wasn't ready but anyway we just stared off topic so I'm actually gonna close it out right there <laughs> so that's it for the shade topic Tuesdays it for the shade topic Tuesdays oh uh. Shade Topic Tuesdays. Hey, Shade Topic Tuesdays. Okay, so that's all I got for y'all today. Thanks for getting to the end of the video and watching me. And make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe, comment, and like. And I will see y'all again next week, okay? Bye. Yeah, nigga, yeah, nigga. No one but you.